Gender Affairs, Gender and Child Affairs Division. Professor Mr. 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 So the event is cancelled, by the way. Well, postponed. The 22nd of March. So you can save yourself on the bus route around this one. Maybe have a bus route pass and JW was flexing. But uh, it's postponed. We have had a range of activities. Truth be told, International Women's Day is the second carnival for any feminist women's rights leader or general practitioner. We have a range of activities where we have to divest our staff to ensure that we have representation in the private sector, the public sector, trade unions, civil society organizations. So my name is Amilka Sonata, and I'm the Assistant Director for Gender Affairs and Gender and Child Affairs, the Office of the Prime Minister. And I, the ministry is led by the Honorable Ayanna Webster Roy, the Minister in the Office of the Prime Minister with the responsibility for Gender Affairs. And we are the National Gender Machinery for Trinidad and Tobago, where the official policy of government establishing national policy on gender and development guides the work that we do mainstreaming gender equality in all spheres of development. The theme for International Women's Day this year is invest in progress, invest in women so that we can accelerate progress. Invest in women so we can accelerate progress, a very sophisticated mantra to say, put your money where your mouth is. And that is the way that we also see gender affairs, the mainstream of gender equality, advancing equity and justice in the public sphere for all women. On Monday, we launched the National Strategic Action Plan on Gender-Based Violence and Sexual Violence, which is an all-of-government and an all-of-society approach to mitigating the risk, exposure, and acceptance to gender-based violence and sexual violence people have. We live in a society, regrettably, as your body changes physiologically from primary school, you are subject to sexual harassment. And people remind you what you should dress, or you're growing up too fast, or the mango ripen too quickly on the tree. So all of these cultural meanings which are embedded in our culture entrench the gender inequalities that we have. So the National Strategic Action Plan on Gender-Based Violence is over 100 million investment, dollar investment of Trinidad and Tobago dollars from 2023 to 2027, coordinated the response of international development and the government. It is our largest public investment in ending gender-based violence and sexual violence in Trinidad and Tobago, and the most coordinated response we have to date. We also launched the STEP program, Survivors Transformation Empowerment Program. Because we said and we understood empowerment is not enough. That economic autonomy means that women could define the way that they have finances on their terms. <coughs> that there are institutional barriers which still render the complementarity of men to women. That the assets that they acquire is still in relation to the man in their life. And when they lack a man, they don't have equal economic footing. So autonomia, since we have Latin American attendees, was a concept we have learned in the inter-American system to expand our understanding and what we say when we empower women economically. Then we have something called gender-responsive budgeting, which I encourage every person here, an institutional leader, to embrace. Gender-responsive budgeting means we track our investments and its differential impact on men and women for every program, policy, or project. So we could tell you in monetary terms, it's just metricizing what we do, how much we invest in women at the end of a fiscal year. That is important. It's not enough to say we do these projects and them think for them women and them over there. That's cute. When we understand that this is part of our core operations and people in the budgets, finances, and human resources division Think about how am I impacting men and women when they're doing up an annual budget. That is when we start to mainstream gender equality, putting our money where our mouth is. And I'd just like to establish some concrete realities. One in three women experience a form of intimate violence in their lifetime throughout the world. 
In Trinidad and Tobago, the prevalence rate is 44%. That means almost half of the women who are here experience a form of violence in their lifetime. I'm going to read an uglier statistic. 10% of ever pregnant women experience a form of violence by their partner during their pregnancy term. What kind of society we have created to violate a pregnant woman? So now that we have this prevalent prevalence information, what can we do? We must create companies, governments,